Hello everyone and welcome to today's program. Uh, Shane Holsgrove here and uh, again I have with me Etienne uh, from Grace Life Tigerberg in uh, the Cape Town area and uh, Grace Life uh, Stellenbosch's um, Peter Vierning and uh, yeah, we are, we're answering questions and uh, one of the questions that continuously comes up um, is one about generational curses and uh, we haven't or I haven't spoken about this in a long time um, and so I, I said, hey, let's, um, let's definitely climb into this one. Um, but before we do, I'll say, you know, a couple of years back, 13 years ago, I, 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 I kind of shared this publicly and uh, thinking people would love this. <laughs> I thought people would be excited about what I have to say about this. And it was amazing how much um, backlash I got publicly for this. Um, and um, anyway... Uh, I still believe what I, what I shared, it's just developed, and I've got more to sh uh, say on it now. Um, but I thought, let me start off by sharing just a little bit. I don't know what your guys' experience is with uh, this topic. Um, uh, I'll share mine, and then if you have anything, you can add to it. I know we, we, we kind of come from different backgrounds, uh, Christianity, church-wise and yeah. stuff. I grew up, uh, kind of I went to Baptist Sunday school and um, uh, was in a charismatic church, and so kind of had a quite a mixed bag of uh, experience. Um, but one of the things that we grew up, I grew up uh, believing because I heard it in church, especially I believe charismatic church in South Africa loves this uh, topic, is on generational curses. And, you know, the reason why there's problems in your life, the reasons why, um, my, um, you know, there's no boys being born into our family before I was uh, born, the reason why the, the lineage has not uh, continued uh, and only women were being born into the family. All the men were uh, stillborn or, 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 you know, died prematurely. Sure. was because of generational curses, because great-granddaddy was a Freemason or because whatever. Um, you know, in African, uh, that is, I'm African, but in, uh, in black African culture, it might be because, you know, someone was a Sangoma, a witch doctor, uh, was involved with juju or something like that. So, I mean, in every culture, we see this, yeah. you know. Uh, because they were worshiping the ancestors, now you have to suffer, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et and um, you know um, the the testimony of it. We, 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 it's it's so important that we don't live our, our lives and base our beliefs on testimonies, because your testimony can be wrong. Yeah. You know, um, Joseph Smith had a testimony about an experience with angels uh, and and giving him a word, and he started a cult. And so, you know, we got to be careful with testimonies. But the testimony in our family was they broke the curses and here I am, uh, you know, first b uh, born male in the, the family for a while. And, you know, I'm not belittling people's faith uh, and, and all of that involved in it, you know, and we only know what we know according to the knowledge that we have. Yeah. Okay, but that shows us how much we need to dig in. But anyhow. You know, then I really, like a couple of years later, was at a conference about generational curses and all this type of stuff. And, you know, they were telling us we have to break this stuff again. And then a couple of years later, we're going through a course and we have to break this stuff again. And it's like, how often do we have to deal with this stuff? Yeah. Well, how come it keeps growing back up? Uh, and anyway, um, there, there, there's so much stuff we can talk about. But I, I come out of this background. We deal with, I, I've been involved in a lot of this. Um, so th this is why I'm passionate about it. Have you guys got any experience with this or maybe just in ministering to people, it comes up a lot? Yeah, uh, personally, I think having more of a conservative background, we weren't uh, privileged. You weren't to swinging from the chandeliers. <laughs> we weren't privileged, but uh, Shane has made me a, a charismatic, so that's good. Um, but no, in ministry, dealing with it and uh, dealing with people. And um, yeah, I think it comes up a lot. Generational curses, being cursed by someone, the Songoma paid money and now I don't find love or I don't find my spouse or my kid is sick, whatever that curse uh, mentality and it's really, a, it's not a victor's mentality. Like yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a victim mentality. So yeah, that's just maybe one thing that I'll just add to what you've said already. That's really good. Etienne? No, I think yeah, from my side, also more uh, kind of um, conservative, conservative background. Um, but in my early kind of um, walks where relationship with God really kind of kicked off, um, did experience a little bit of that. Like, the, like mm -hmm. a lot of effort, a lot of pressing in, um, focusing on trying to break this and break that and get free from this and get free from that. 
So, uh, yeah, but very slim, but I did experience some of that. You know, one of the things we had to do is even like you had to research your family line. Um, and it's a lot of work, you know, now you have to go and figure out like, and I mean, I've got some tyrants in my, <laughs> my family line, like, so there was a lot of stuff to, 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 to break off and, and destroy. Um, and it's funny because one of the things I found myself doing uh, uh, in dealing with all of this was I used all of these generational things, curses and whatever, as excuses yeah. for my bad decisions. Um, the reason why I'm struggling with such and such must be because of great granddaddy who was whatever or great great granddaddy who was uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, all of this, I'll say very plain and simply, like just kind of belittles and devalues redemption. Yeah. Simply. I mean, we, we, we're going to get into depth on this now and uh, unmask generational curses a little bit. But the, the, the point is, is like, um, I mean... Um, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. It's like you don't have great granddaddy's lineage anymore. You're a new uh, 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 of a new family line. And I think that that's the, 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 the main thing we need to remember here. This is the crux of the issue is like you've got a new lineage, a new family. And so whatever's part, whatever there was is now gone. You, as a Christian, you can't even break it. Yeah. Because it's gone. Like, if you give it power in your life, I'm sure that the enemy will play with you and some stuff like that but, and, and cause some effects. But we're free from what was. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Galatians 3, obviously 13, speaks about Amazing. Jesus making us three from the, the curse of the law. Um, but then if you just go down, and uh, verse 27 says, For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ. And that just supports what you said, Shane. Like, um, it, it, I used to be a Jew. No, I don't. But uh, if you were used to be a Jew and you're in Christ, you're no longer a Jew. So how can you have the curse of the Jew? If you used to be a Gentile and you got into Christ, now you're part of him, part of his family. So you can't have the curse of a Gentile because Christ has redeemed us from, from the curse. Um, and then it says, then, and if you are Christ's, then you're Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So we don't, we're not heirs of curses or, or heirs of, of, of generational curses. We're not inheriting anything that is not from Christ. When we come into Christ, when we baptize into Christ, when we become those new creations, our only inheritance is what Christ has and is what God has is, is instilled for Him. Mm -hmm. Very good. You know, I think let's, let's talk a little bit about like why... Um, generational curses, this whole concept of it and, and needing to, you know, it, it, whole ministries are formed around this. Um, before I went into full-time ministry, um, you know, I, I, I had a group of friends who, you know, really loved them and all of this type of stuff. Um, I didn't have any contact with them anymore, but they, they were very much like, you know, you need to come for a spiritual house cleaning before you go into ministry. And I was like, spiritual what? No, I, I knew what they were talking about, but you might be going spiritual what? And so I had to go and visit them and, you know, you fast for the day in order to prepare for, for it. And, and now they're going to do deliverance on you because now like a whole ministry revolves around this misunderstanding or this, this lie. Um, I don't know how else to dress it up. And, and so now like it's a case of, you know, um, your, 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 uh, your ancestors were Freemasons. So now here's a 14 page um, prayer of renunciation that you need to pray through. I'm not exaggerating. There was like a 14-page thing. And you know what was really funny? I'm, I'm, I'm from a part of the, the country in South Africa, which is English. So back then, my Afrikaans was really nowhere. <laughs> and they couldn't find the English one. Oh, man. <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> so I had to read this in Afrikaans. And the fun, like there's some big words in there when You're it comes speaking to in tongue, Shane. all of this. <laughs> I said to them, I won't really understand this. And you know what they said to me? doesn't matter. The demons understand. So bless their hearts. Like it, it, it was something else. It was, a, it was. I'm, I'm sure that God was maybe either, I don't know, rolling his eyes or laughing, um, but it was, it was pitiful. It was pitiful. Um, I think one of the reasons we like this kind of thing is because it makes us feel like we're doing something. Isn't that that's the yeah. essence of legalism? Isn't yeah. it? Breaking something. Breaking doing something. something performing like, something. Like yeah, performance. It's yeah. it's a case of, um, um, you know, it's in, you know, you, you you've got this problem in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Now, now, I can pray for you and minister to you and share truth with you and it can help you. But what I can also do is say, no, no, no. 
I'm going to break the power of the devil over your life. Yeah. Like, instead of saying, hey, uh, 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 you, you can stand up against this and empowering you to deal with it. It's like, all glory to me. Yeah. You know, it kind of gives me a feeling of validation that I've taken you through a, a, a 20 hour course and made you pay for a workbook to, to list all the issues in your life and then find the spiritual roots of it. And I break it off. I mean, I know I'm, I, I may be describing some of y'all's ministry and I apologize, uh, but the truth will set you free, knowing the truth. And hopefully this will help you. Um, anyway, can you turn uh, uh, it in Exodus 34? I want to kind of dig into this a little bit, where, where we could get the idea uh, uh, from, uh, gen about generational curses. Um, and, I, and I'll just remind us of something that we're continuously bringing up in this program. And what we're continuously teaching in, in, in Grace Life is that, you know, um, through the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, it's a progressive revelation. So it's progressive revelation. It's building upon each other. You've got Moses' writings, and then you've got the prophets, and they're building, and um, they're adding to, to make a fuller picture of God. But it's never complete. It's never complete. It's never perfect until Jesus. Now there's a full picture of Jesus, a big picture of Jesus. Okay? Um, so Exodus 34 is written by Moses. Okay? Moses is recording this. And, um, uh, and let's, let's look at what he records in Exodus 34, 6 and 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity um, and transgression and sin, and, that, um, and that, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity, of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So, this is where a lot of people get their basis for generational curses. And um, some of them have even built successful ministries around this uh, lie. Um, and, and as a result are prospering financially because of it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, 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 it's, we have to inspect this. Because for me, I don't know about you guys, it sounds confusing. It says, like, God's this good God, He forgives, but, yeah. you know, does that sound good? I don't think so. Sounds schizophrenic. Sounds, uh, sounds schizophrenic. I want to say scounds. Mm -hmm. That's not a word. But sounds schizophrenic. And, <clears throat> and so, you know, this is what Moses writes about God. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's recording what, what God has said. But we need to, there, there's a lot we can dig into there. I want to touch on just one aspect that I've never really touched on a, a before with that. And that, and that is then how Ezekiel writes to correct and build on what Moses was talking about. Sure. Okay. Um, and so, you know, Moses is saying um, that, that the sins of the fathers are going to pass on the, the, the children and the, the next generations to come and whatever. And so generational curses, you know, your great granddaddy did this and that, the next thing, you're going to pay for it. And so... Um, Ezekiel corrects that in Ezekiel 18, verse 2 and 3. And he says, what do you mean when you use the proverb concerning the land of Israel saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. So it's talking about generational curses. The, the children are, are experiencing the results of what the fathers did. Okay. And then in verse 3, he says, as I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. And then we see, um, so he's saying, don't do, don't do that anymore. Then in, in Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah adds to this. And Jeremiah is now correcting it and, and bringing it a, a clearer picture of this. Um, and I'm going to answer Moses in a moment, so just wait there. But uh, uh, Jeremiah 29, oh, 31, 29, and 30, if you can read that someone, if you've got it. Jeremiah 31, 29, and 30. Yeah, it says in those days they shall no more. The fathers have eat say no more. The fathers has eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. This is good news for all of us as fathers. Amen. Like we are responsible for our own decisions. Yeah. Yes, as fathers, our children if, if feel the effects of what we've done. Yeah. You know. But just because your father was an alcoholic doesn't mean you're going to be an alcoholic unless you learned the habit from him. Yeah. But there isn't a special demon that's now attached to you because your, your dad struggled with alcoholism. Mm. You know, 
or whatever other sin. And I think that, that, that's, a, that, that's really important. We, 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 we're going to talk about a new creation in a moment. But what I see here is you have Moses saying something. Then you have, um, who was it? Ezekiel saying something, building on it and correcting it. Now you have Jeremiah saying something and correcting on it. Now let's think about Moses for a moment. He says what he says um, in um, uh, Exodus 34. Now think about the Exodus. Yeah. Okay, think about it for a moment. You have these, these guys who are hard-hearted and they're, um, they're going around in the desert for 40 years. And um, uh, uh, the fathers don't inherit the land. Yeah. The children inherit the land. That doesn't make sense in terms of generational curses. Yeah. Who broke the generational curses for them to enter the promised land? Good. The children entered the promised land. Yeah. They didn't suffer the consequences of their sins. Yeah, they didn't suffer because of their father's sins in the sense of not inheriting. Yeah. And they didn't break anything. They just went in. Yeah. I think that that's important for us to see just how uh, uh, um, clear that is in, in example there. But let's move over to the new covenant now because in, 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 in Christ, it should be easier enough for us to be able to deal with this. And I think... You know, we, we, we can build ministries from the Old Testament, but uh, we've got a new ministry that we need to um, uh, 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 be operating from. Yeah. A new, a new part, uh, this side of the cross, everything's even different. So someone read for us, please, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And then let's get into that. <clears throat> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, I mean, you, 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 you're a new person, new generation, new um, uh, uh, creation. The old is past, like you've got a new bloodline. Yeah. So, so what, would that, what, what, what does that mean? Do you have great granddaddy's uh, bloodline anymore? Yeah. No. Well, you've got all the blessings of God now. Amen. That's why we're blessed. It yeah. doesn't say we're, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings, but we still carry some of the curses of our fathers. It says we're blessed, Amen. period. Yeah, verse 18 says all the new things are of God. So you have all new things, and all the new things are of God. So, I mean, God's not generationally cursed, is He? Uh, God's not, uh, he, He's holy, He's set apart, He's love, He's, he's, he's life, He's gracious, He's good. Um, and then reconciliation unto Christ, that, I mean, you can't, you can't take a curse into Christ. Mm -mm. Like, just think about that. If you're one with Christ, how can you take your curse there? Mm -hmm. Like, the curse cannot stand because He's the one who redeemed us from the curse. So when we're in Christ, when we're new creations, there's no place for the curse. Jesus is full of two things. Grace and peace. Yeah. So no curse. I mean, Jesus isn't full of curses. He's That's not. He's, he's, he's he even and what's it? John three seventeen says, "I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world." I don't know about you, but a curse is condemnation. It's like you cannot do this. You cannot have a son. You cannot do this. You yeah. because of that. There's good reason sometimes, but mm. it's not a good reason. I mean, if it's a lie, because if it's in Christ, it's everything is new, and we've been reconciled to Him in Christ Jesus. So yeah, thank you, Shane. I'm enjoying this. That's good. Um, uh, Etienne, if you can read for us again, um, um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, if you can get the passion on that one for us, um, uh, um, um, Peter. Peter will get the, we'll get the, get Peter. <laughs> but you got, um, um, it's, it's so important to kind of see ourselves as God sees us. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah. It's like, you know, I believe okay, you know, maybe um, yeah, we're all responsible for our own, our own actions and our own yeah. sin. Yes, my actions will affect my, my, uh, my kids, but whether they're in Christ or not, like, I mean, what, what has this got to say about kids that are adopted? I mean, I've, I've heard it said in um, <clears throat> generational min uh, curse ministries, like there's a lot of kind of like investigation that needs to happen then, or like you just have to trust God and break it. And it's like, you know, what goes for the goose goes for the gander. You can't have it in, in, in one sense and not in the other. What's, what's, what's our call? What's our call as believers? Yeah, to be ambassadors for Christ, to go into the, the nations. Yeah. Like, this is a distraction of the enemy, um, generational curse ministry, mm. to pull us away from preaching the gospel. Amen. Because it wastes our time. Yeah. It wastes our time. Paul says, I worry that you're beguiled yeah. from anything uh, away from the simplicity of Christ. This is one so, of us. Yeah, that's not the simplicity Read for us, of please, Christ. 1 Peter 3 verse 9 says, nine. Uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous 
light. Amen. Read in the Passion for us, please. But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience His marvelous light, and now He claims you as His very own. He did this so that you would broadcast His glorious wonders throughout the world. So Amen. much. We're broadcasting. So much. Yeah. <laughs> so much in there. Um, uh, I want to talk about chosen generation, first of all. You are a chosen generation. Okay, now we, we, we're dealing with generational curses. Um, so th this is now showing us you've got a new generation. You've got a new, th th it's no longer um, anything that was cursed. It's like now you're in Christ. Um, it's done. You, yeah. you, 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 you don't even need to, to pray about what your grandfather did. You don't like, like, um, like. Think about the like. Okay, maybe, um, maybe he's not the worst tyrant that ever lived, but but uh, he's pretty bad. Hitler, mm. you know. If you don't know who he is, go go Google it and learn some history. But it's like if your great grandfather was Hitler, you don't need to pray about that. Sure. Like, what can you do? Yeah. Like, you don't even need to say sorry to God. Why? Because Hitler maybe is your 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 family lineage, but but you're a new creation in yeah. Christ Jesus. The old is gone, the new has come. Period. Yeah. There's nothing else to, to carry you on there. Um, read the, the, the last part of that verse for us, Etienne. Who has? Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So in terms of that statement there, Etienne, where are generational curses? It was in the darkness. <laughs> it's in the darkness. And what has God done uh, in, for us in that situation? He's called us out of darkness mm. and we're now sitting in light. So if there are generational curses, you've been called out of that. Amen. Okay. When did you come out of darkness and into the light? When you responded to Christ, the gift. But that, that, that moment. Now, now, was it a process of coming out of darkness yeah. into light? No. I mean, there might be darkness in our thinking that we're yeah. coming out of and we, we're growing in that. That's discipleship, mm. you know. But the point there is, is that we come out of the darkness and we might still feel like there's things of darkness in our lives and whatever, but it's in the mind that we've got to renew our minds to the truth to, to in order to experience the, the fruitfulness of thereof. But the point is, the moment you say yes to Jesus, mm. you're not the same person. Amen. You're different. Amen. Yeah. I think it happened so quickly, Shane, that like we need to... We need to understand, we need to renew our minds, we need to find the truth of what happens in that moment when we say yes to God. What? Because it's a miracle. I mean, and it happens in the Spirit. The Word says that, that we now become one with His Spirit. I mean, again, there's no, there's no place for a curse in the Spirit of God. I mean, God is a Spirit. But even uh, Colossians 1 backs what you say, like He's been translated from the kingdom, the realm, the reign, the rule of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love or the kingdom of love. So do you think God is going to allow, Jesus, the Son of Light, the Son of Love, is going to allow a curse in His kingdom? Because that's what we need to, to say. Because you're either in Christ, in the new kingdom, or you're not. Mm. And if you're in the new kingdom, there's no darkness. I mean, because He is light. Like even in the book of Revelation, we don't have the Son because we've got the Son, the Son of God. <laughs> in Him is no darkness. So if we're in God, and there's no darkness in God, according to the book of James, like, how can we take some of our darkness or our grandfather's darkness or anything into there? Like, you, you just need to ignore so many verses to believe in a generational curse. Good, yeah, 100% it, it, true. And you have to ignore the basic foundational truths of the gospel Amen. and what the gospel's made of. Because yeah. in Christ, you're blessed, Amen. you know, period. You, 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 so, so there cannot be a curse that, that, that holds on to you. You know, as, we, as I was thinking about some of the objections that we might get to this, because it's very simplistic in the sense of yeah. your new creation in Christ. And generational curses can get very complicated in its uh, explanations and stuff, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it right. It's just complicated. Um, think about some of the, the objections that, that, that people might raise and, and, and how we could respond to them. I know one of the objections I've received is people have been teaching generational curses and been dealing with this for hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's that much really, but uh, then they're like, um, you know, how, who are you to kind of, kind of come up with this? I've, you go Google it. Lots of people are saying what we're saying. Uh, and that doesn't make it right. Yeah. It, it, but, but if you look at the word, yeah, this the makes word sense. <laughs> this makes sense. Another thing is I remember um, years back uh, we were living in Stellenbosch and we had a, 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 um, someone from the church come and visit us. And my wife, uh, Marna, was, uh, went, went for a walk with this uh, lady 
And uh, they were just getting to know each other and connecting. And all of a sudden, um, she broke down. And they sat on the pavement, and she was crying, this woman. And uh, my wife put her arm around her and was like, um, you know, what's wrong? And she said, we're struggling to fall pregnant. Like, we've been struggling for years. And she said, um, is it, uh, it must be because of a generational curse. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, have you, you, you guys have experienced that. Someone saying, I'm experiencing this problem. It must be because mm. of that. You know, generational curse. Yeah. And uh, um, my, I love wh wh how my wife responded. She, she just said, that's rubbish. <laughs> she said, you know, let me, um, I'm going to pray for you now. She's like, you're a new creation in Christ. There's no such thing as a generational curse on you. She said, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you. And just uh, prayed for, you know, um, just release from this uh, um, heaviness yeah. regarding this lie. And uh, I think it was, a, it was a, within a month they fell pregnant. And I, th I think they got three kids by now. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it just shows you like um, it's, it, 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 believing this lie can really hold you back from experiencing all that God's got for you. Mm -hmm. Anything else you guys want to say with regards to objections? Yeah, really like it's like picking up your cross and following Christ. It's not picking up your curse. And then the cross is there to deal with the, 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 the curse. So picking up your cross is something completely different. I just feel someone like you might say, but yeah, that's my, that's my burden to bear. Is this, and, and you've been bearing it, but like, I mean, it's not from God. Mm, I mean, amen. you're called to be set free. You, you're new creation. You, you, you're born from above. Um, like you are not cursed. Amen. amen. That's good. I also say, I think oftentimes uh, people are passionate and that's why we are uh, tackling this topic people have been passionate about mm -hmm. fighting and uh, pulling down strongholds and this and that and the next thing and fighting yeah. this this idea of generational curses and uh, it's good to be passionate but um, the Jews are also passionate and uh, Paul touches on this in Romans 10 verse 2 for I bear them record that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge sure. and so we need to understand that our zeal for God and the fights we're fighting uh, and what we're passionate about is it in line with the word. Mm -hmm. I just want to touch on this in 1 Timothy um, chapter, chapter 6 as well, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Mm. Fight the good fight of faith. What fight are you fighting? What, good is, good what is the fight of faith? Um, what are we focusing on? And that's ultimately important. Jesus, uh, and, and this is a, a, a passage that is, uh, Shane has brought up oftentimes and so beautiful where, where Jesus again explains to us what is the message of the gospel. And you touched on it early on as well. Um, we need to understand the message of the gospel, the message of Christ, and that is fighting the good fight of faith. That's good. When we're talking about uh, um, provoking one another unto love and good works, it needs to be in accordance with something specific, and mm. it's the message of the gospel. Mm. And so Jesus just uh, simply explains to us again the message of the gospel here in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was just with, with you. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, thus it behoves Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And uh, this is, that's the message, mm -hmm. that it's the message of Christ, that Jesus died, Jesus rose from the dead, and it's about repentance, remission of sins, forgiveness mm -hmm. of sins. That's the message of the gospel, what Christ came to do for us. Okay. And that's the fight that we need to fight. That's the fight of faith. It's not about this, that, or next thing. So it's understanding our new creation identity, mm -hmm. and from that place, living out this mission of preaching Christ. Amen. So in conclusion, I'll just say you are free. There's no uh, uh, generational curse on you. And if you're still struggling to, to understand that, uh, I would encourage you to, to dig into the Word, pray, contact us uh, with uh, any questions so we can help you come to an understanding of this because we want to see you walking and living in freedom. Anyway, until next time, you are blessed.